Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to CS Care Technologies. Uh, today, in this video, we'll be uh, learning how to make a component, which is of this sort. It's a little medium level of it's a, it's a medium level of a component, and we'll see the tutorial of how to make this step by step. Now, as usual, first let us understand the drawing. There are again three views: the front view, the right view, and the top view. The front view is actually a section cut exactly at this location, as you can see, and the interior internal features are easily visible to you. Similarly, this is the top view, and the top view is is actually cut at this location. This is your section. Now, uh, this section gives us few details about the internal features. This section gives us few details about the internal features. Now we also have a right view, which uh, mostly gives the outlines of the dimension for better understanding, as well as the dimensions of the features over here. As you can see, uh, this is 30, this is 30. Similarly, there's a 17 hole, which is 17 through. Now, uh, let's begin making a model. As we all know that this is a cylindrical model. It has a diametrical uh, icon over here. So I'll be taking a 110 diameter circle to 165 and the most important part is the 0 comma 0 which is this location i am using this as the 0 comma 0 you can obviously take the base as well but it's a little more convenient for me if i use this because i have a feature over here now, let us begin it's a solid component hence mechanical design and part design it will we'll be entering into the workbench you can either make a sketch first or you can use it inside the command. I, I'd like to use it inside the shaft and then just select the sketch and start making it. The main and the most important uh, thing to do as soon as you click on the shaft is define your axis. This is my axis. Now I have a rectangle. I am taking the whole 110 dia and then removing the material one after the other. This is actually called the step by step feature brace modeling. Uh, since I have considered this as my 0 comma 0, obviously this is my 0 comma 0 which is supposed to be at a distance of 70 and the overall height of the body from 70 to the end is actually 165 which is over here. Now uh, obviously you require a diameter, the diameter is, is 110 so let me try to take the diameter as well. This is 110 as you can see, so let me try to take the diameter. This is supposed to be one. Exit the workbench, it will create a simple cylinder. Now, to achieve this shape, let's try to remove the material one after the other. At the moment, I have 76 over here, so I'll be taking 76. And then the internal is 30, and then the external is 32, as you can see over here. So let's try to do that in one attempt using a group command. You can again select the sketch and start making it. I'll be using the existing body axis itself, but as my references, I'll be using the cylinders reference. Now, our sketch goes somewhat like this. It has to cut from here, goes till there, and then cut there, and goes up till there, and then closes over here. This is our sketch, which we are trying to remove off of the existing cylinder. Now, let's start giving the dimensions. We know that the cut of 76 is starting from 12. So let's try to take that 12. Similarly, we also know the diameters. This dia is actually supposed to be 76. So let's try to take that 76. Now, the height of the 76 is 110 from 12. So I'd like to take 110 from here. And give this as 110. Now you can see they gradually start changing. So let's try to uh, dimension these as well. This is supposed to be 5, which they have already given here. This is 5. And the diameter of uh, the inner one is 30 and the outer one is 32. This is supposed to be 30. This is supposed to be 32. This is your actual cut, as you can see. The sketch is completely constrained. 
Now I am exiting the workbench to show you how it tries to remove the material exactly how the model looks like. Now uh, let's try to add these features. See there is a problem is that whenever you are trying to take the front view and try to make the model, we know the overall dimensions are given which is 70 and then 41. There is no overall dimension given to us. So what I will do is I will be taking references to create these sort of a feature. That is from this plane, I would like to take the reference. So coming to my front view, it has to be done on this side. So as I mentioned, again, I'm trying to create a reference onto the opposite side to 70 first, which is for this feature. Let me try to take that as 70. Similarly, I have another, the end of the cylinder, as you can see, is at a distance of 41 again. So from here, it is at a distance of 41. So I'm trying to take it at a distance of 41. There is a, a reason is that I am trying to maintain the dimensions. I am not trying to randomly take 74 and triple one and then do it. I am actually trying to maintain 41 and 70. Now I'd like to maintain 18 as well. So from this plane, the reason why I'm doing this is you cannot keep two, two bodies hanging in the air ever doing your part modeling. This is one single component. Hence, I can use this plane to add material up to the cylinder and then add extra material here. Now, the 18 mm plane, whatever it I have taken, let's select that and try to add the material onto the existing body. As usual, since my 0, 0 is already taken, I have no issues with the 0, 0. And then I'm trying to make a circle here, which is of 30 dia. This the outer, outer one is what I'm talking about is 30 dia. You can see it here as well. I'll tell you why there are two circles because there's a small circle added over here too. So that's why they have mentioned two thirties. Now adding this material up to the next body, it can find, you can see it adds. You cannot use a shaft command here. There'll be a gap in between both the bodies. Similarly, I have another one. Uh, I'm sorry, this is 28 and the outer one is 30. Similarly, I have the same body. Again, I'm trying to use pad on this. And then I'm trying to give 30. I have done the inner one, which is 28 and the outer one is 30. The 30 is also up to the next plane or up to the selected phase. So I'll just select the plane and say, okay, it adds till then. Now, similarly, we have a feature over here, which is at a distance of 28 from the center. It's a, we can take a reference and then do up to next. It's a little easier. So you can take it at a distance of 28. On this plane, I'd like to add the material now. The location is this. We already know the reference. So I'm just trying to take a random circle and then coincide it on the plane instead of repeating the dimension. Now you can either maintain tangency with the edge or give the dimension. Since they have mentioned the dimension, you can give 28. It has to be added up to the next in the opposite direction. This is how it adds. the This is the outer uh, body. Now the main and the important part is to make this cut. So let's try to make the cut using our simple pocket command. Since it's a square cut and not a cylindrical cut, I'm trying to I'm trying to use a pocket command only. And then I'd like to use my references as usual and then start making the body. Now, uh, these are my references. Let me try to make the shape. This uh, shape is actually starting from 12. It's take a, it takes a step and then starts. Let me try to take it like this. It's easier for me to use a profile command. I'm sorry. This way. And then close it. Now, let's start giving the dimensions. It's at a distance of 5 from here. So let's try to take that as 5 as well. This is at 5. And now we know the overall height of this is 77. Let's try to give 77. Now, all we have to do is cut the body. Let me try to use this reference and then coincide it. It's a little easier. This and this should probably be in one line. Perfect. Now exit. It is trying to remove the material off till the next. It has to do the same onto the other direction too. 
so i'm trying to remove the material on both the sides this is how your front view looks like we'll start giving rounds and stuff a little later but let us try to remove the internal features first before going further i have a groove command to do so again since they're all cylindrical cuts i'm trying to take a groove command you can see that they're all cylindrical cuts 60 etc so again uh, i'll be using the same axis and i'll start making my sketch from the bottom till the end let me try to use it before itself rather than taking later now i i'll start making the sketch from here goes up to there assume and then goes till there okay, let's zoom in and show you this is the actual cut i want Now, let's try to dimension them. We know that the inner one is 60. So, I'll write today, I'd like to give this at 60. Now, this has to be at a distance of 45 from the center. This is my center. That is the reason the center has been chosen that way because it's a little more easier to do it. Similarly, you have an internal cut. This is the small cut, which is 18. I'm using a shaft command to remove the material. So, this is supposed to be 18. And the top one, which is 27, and the depth is 2. This depth is actually 2. And the outer portion, that is this dimension, is supposed to be 27. Now, let's try to cut this off of the existing body. You can cut and remove, or you can do it this way. It tries to remove it this way, as you can see. Now, the reason why I've cut this and then working on it is there's a small addition of material here. So before making this hole, I'd like to add this and then further move on. So I need a reference at a distance of 20, sorry, at a distance of 26, because they've already mentioned 26 here. And since now that I've created this plane, on this plane, I'll write, I'd like to make a sketch. The sketch is actually of a 30 dia circle, as you can see here. You can either use the reference of the old one, or you can again repeat the dimension of Okay. Now this has to be on the other side. So I'm giving it up to 4 mm and I'm saying OK. So it tries to add the material this way, as you can see. Now, after this, let's try to start drilling our holes, whatever the, whatever the next steps are. Now there is a hole command here which we can use. Again, I'm trying to select the feature. Again, select. Again, I have to maintain concentricity. So when the feature updates, the whole body should auto update itself. That is the first rule of feature based modeling. We know the diameter is 17 and we know it's up to the next surface. So we are trying to take it till there. Similarly, there is a hole on top of this as well, which is actually of 12 and through. So I'm just giving it as 12 and then again dimensioning it. So we do not miss the center. Exit. It tries to drill the hole there up to the next. Now, there are four holes on this face. So, let's try to give those as well. Uh, I, it's better for me to use a circular pattern. So, let's, let me try to take a hole first at this location or this location and then probably start dimensioning it. It has to be coincident on the center since there are four holes. They will be at 90 degrees obviously. This is the center and then there is a PCD given for you which is of 92 from this center. This is of 92. Now, the, the point should be actually lying on this circle and the circle also should be lying on this center. Now exit, that is the location. Again, there are eight into next. So there are actually three holes. So let me try to use a circular pattern to give three holes. And I am trying to use complete crown, give four. And then reference element is a cylindrical body. I will try to remove this off because they just want three and they'll give you three. Last but not the least, there are few rounds given. 
So again, uh, I'm trying to make those rounds as well. This is R10. So there's one R10 over here as well as over there. Let me try to give it as R10. You can see the model. So this is R15 over here as well. That is four, four uh, places will have R15. That is one, two, uh, three and four, which is R15. Now, similarly, there is a round over here as well, which is R2. So let's try to take that as well and say it's supposed to be R2. There's one more round over here, which is R4. Again, uh, let me try to select that as well. Then give R4. I don't think that uh, creates a proper round. Okay. So I don't think that creates a proper round. It's a corner uh, location. Now, this is how you actually uh, make the model. Uh, I, there are actually four holes. There, there's something wrong in the drawing. So let me try to take this as four. There's a the pattern. Uh, I, I just will uncheck this so I can have four holes and show it to you. Now, we can actually select the dynamic sectioning to show you how it looks like. This is your cut section. Similarly, the cut section was at the top as well. This is your cut section. This is how you make these kind of models using CATIA as the CAT tool. Similarly, if you're looking for any advanced level of training in CATIA, you can uh, contact us. You can, our details are given in the description below. Thank you.